So the race for autonomous cars is getting a little more interesting right now. Phil LeBeau joins us again, and he's got some breaking news for us this time. Phil. Uh, Andrew, today is when Waymo makes its vehicles in parts of uh, Phoenix metro area, basically Chandler, uh, Tempe, other areas there. Their vehicles are now going to be part of the Lyft rideshare program out there. So if you are a Lyft customer, we were out there over the last couple of days to see how this would work. If you are a Lyft customer within this geofenced area and you call for a vehicle, well then you have the option potentially to have a Waymo autonomous minivan pick you up. And as we've been out there in the past, we've seen that the, we're seeing more and more of these minivans. So when you look at Waymo out in Arizona, keep in mind, here's what you're looking at. They have now got their vans that they've been testing for some time out in the Phoenix metro area. They also have a thousand early riders. These are people who are pre-screened who said, look, I'll get in these vehicles. And then you've got Waymo One, Waymo's own ride sharing autonomous ride sharing company but the fact now that they are making some of their vehicles yes there is a safety driver there in the driver's seat but they are not driving the vehicle the fact that they're on the lyft platform guys as you take a look at shares of lyft and uber this is the next step in this discussion about what happens and how far away are we from autonomous vehicles being part a big part of the lyft and uber platforms we're a long ways from that, guys, but this is the beginning of we're going to see more of this in other cities in the years to come as they expand uh, these opportunities. Bill, I have very, I have three very quick questions for you. First, yep. what I noticed on the screen was it said free. Is that <laughs> always free, or was that are they discounting no, it the was opportunity an, it was an, to be no, in these was, cars relative to other cars? That was because it was a it, it was okay. it was pre-launch. Okay. So in terms of cost, that, that's a, bro a broader question there in terms of how much different will the cost be. And that was unclear when we had our discussions. So there's no discount for, for, for being one of the, I, I would assume that things, but one of the first in to try this. Sure, I would assume there will be some type of a discount there to okay, a certain extent, the, try yes. It? I don't know. The, sec <laughs> the second question I had was when you said it's geofence, obviously it's a small area. How Correct. small an area are we talking about? We're, t we're talking about, um, I, I don't know, uh, 100 square miles, square miles. You're talking about Gilbert, Chandler, Tempe, and it's got to be a ride that you're taking within that right. area. In other words, if you're going from your house to the grocery right. store and it's within the area where Waymo has already been testing their vehicles, then that's a, po uh, a possibility. But if you're saying, hey, I'm going all the way up to... Uh, you know, so we're way north of Phoenix and it's outside right. the area, then it wouldn't be an option. And they do it in all weather? Do they do it in the rain at night too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. They, they've been testing their vehicles in the rain and at night. Uh, Waymo has been for some time. Okay. Phil LeBeau, thank you for uh, bringing us uh, that news this morning. In the meantime, I want to get some instant reaction on this and so much more. Michael uh, Graham is here as Managing Director and Senior Equity Analyst at Concord. Uh, Genui, good morning. Good morning. Is this game changing? Um, it's definitely a good step in, in, in the direction of autonomous, you know, vehicles really sort of becoming more important. I think the key thing to keep in mind is the cost to operate an internal combustion engine vehicle with a driver uh, on like the Lyft or Uber networks is just over 80 cents per mile. And the cost to operate an electric fully autonomous vehicle is under 30 cents per mile. So you start to see that as they can bring autonomous electric vehicles you know more into the fold and start to gradually have those take up more of the rides you can really bring the cost of operating these networks down a lot of tensions to navigate in the short term for example like how do you price a, a ride with an autonomous vehicle at 30 cents or you know plus a margin and not undercut the drivers that are out there operating the network well, that's now. what i was so, going to say in this case now you got a couple things going on you're going to have a test driver, so you're going to have to pay the test driver, probably actually more than you would even pay a regular driver. You actually have the technology that's then on board. I mean, that's an expensive vehicle to be in. Well, it's, it's so early now. I mean, like th those, those costs that I mentioned are, right. you know, looking out several years. Lyft has said that um, within 10 years it wants to be able to offer, you know, autonomous uh, options for a majority of its rides. So, you know, you've got that kind of time frame to, to go through. And as we go through that time frame, the cost to build all these vehicles and operate these vehicles is going to come way down. How much do you worry that Lyft is being used effectively by Waymo? Meaning that, that all these guys will be used by the manufacturer and then the manufacturer will, once they actually figure out what they're doing, 
will then just try to get into this business? I, I, I think the, the hardware is way more at risk of being sort of commoditized and, and uh, jeopardized than the network. The network is about building liquidity of riders, uh, bringing in a lot of data so that you can price the rides and get the car to the right, right. place at the right time. That's my mind. And you don't think different. that Waymo is getting to collect all of this along the way? Well, Waymo's got a ton of data as well. And, right. um, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, a, a good next step for them to launch a network too. You buy Lyft and Uber at these prices? Uh, definitely. I think they're in the very early days of just massively disrupting transportation. I think they're going to be leaders for a long time.